The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. We say one and only because there just isn't any other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is different, and it tastes different. Miracle Whip tastes so good, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. More Miracle Whip is sold than the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it. Make your salads better tasting with the one and only Miracle Whip. Summertime is generally considered to be a romantic time, what with June, the moon, and all. But here it is September, and the great Gildersleeve has made very little progress in his courtship of the attractive Miss Gloria McKinley. Consequently, he's taking quite a ribbing from his little family. Now, Marjorie, I'm not upset because she had a date last night with that oily assistant manager of Hogan Brothers. I know that, Anki. You're just upset because you had dates with him five nights in a row. Well, she has to be diplomatic. After all, Mr. Krause is her boss. Hey, Unc. Yes, Leroy? Why don't you give her a job in the water department? Make her be diplomatic to you. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, I don't have to go to such lengths to get ahead of Hogan Brothers' assistant manager. I don't understand what she sees in that Krause anyway. Him and his slick hairdo. He isn't nearly as handsome as I am. Well, is he? <laughs> Do I have to answer that? <laughs> Just when I want to raise my allowance? <laughs> well, I think Miss McKinley is very easily impressed, Dunky. After all, she considers an assistant manager a very important person. Well, let's not forget that I'm city water commissioner. That makes me a pretty important person, too. Oh, let's face it, Dunky. You're just a politician. And this year, there are a dime a dozen. <laughs> Even with inflation. Okay, okay. Glory only goes with that fellow because he knows a few prominent people. Well, you know prominent people, Anki. There's Mr. Bullard right across the street. Well, yes. Bullard's the biggest man in town. Been my neighbor for years. Why, George, I'll be glad when good old Bullard gets back from his vacation. Why? He won't even talk to you. (laughs) Well, I'll admit we haven't always seen eye to eye. He's never liked you since the time you waited until the wind was right and then burned that old tire. (laughs) Perhaps I shouldn't have done that. Bullard's a good man. A good, important man. Yes, sir, I'll have to cultivate him this winter. (laughs) Never mind, Bertie. I'm right here by the phone. Okay. Hello? Oh, it's you, Gildersleeve. What? Who is this? This is Rumson Bullard. Oh, oh, Mr. Bullard. Are you home? Gildersleeve, if I were home, would I be phoning you? What does he want, Unc? Be quiet. Uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Bullard? Let me talk to Bertie. Bertie? Well, uh, where are you? I'm on my way back from the Canadian Rockies. Oh? How are the Rockies? Rocky. <laughs> now, will you put Bertie on the phone? Oh, yes. Uh, you want to talk to Bertie? I want to ask a favor of her. A favor? Well, you can ask me. I'll do it. I don't want to ask you. Yeah, well, think it over. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's nice to talk to you. You've been gone quite a while, haven't you? We've missed you. Gildersleeve, stop gibbering and get off the phone. Yeah. Well, I'm not gibbering. It just sounds that way. Long distance. Besides, Bertie... Gildersleeve, put Bertie on the phone! What's the matter, Unc? Leroy, why don't you go outside? Uh, somebody come for Bertie? Oh, Bertie, uh, Mr. Bullard wants to talk to you on the phone. He does? Here's Bertie, Mr. Bullard. Anything else I can do for you? Yes. Go away. <laughs> Here, Bertie. Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Bullard. Bertie, I'll be home at 6 o'clock this evening. I wonder if you 
be kind enough to turn on my refrigerator. Turn on your refrigerator? Is that all he wanted? Tell him I'll do it, Bertie. I have a special hiding place for the key. Yes, sir. It's in the mailbox. In the mailbox. Tell him I'll take care of it, Bertie. Yes, sir. Oh, Unky. Bertie, tell Gildersleeve I heard that, and I don't want him in my house. Yes, sir. Thank you, Bertie. Oh, you're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I guess I'd better get over to Bullard's and turn on his refrigerator. Key in the mailbox, huh, Bertie? Uh, Mr. Gilsey, Mr. Bullard thought of insisted I do it. Well, he probably thought I was too busy. Uh, I think you should let Bertie do it. What's this, my dear? Well, if he wanted you to do it, he'd have asked you. No, Marjorie, let's not be butting into other people's business. What a character! <laughs> There's no hurry about turning on Bullard's refrigerator. I think I'll drop into Hogan Brothers first and see Glory. Well, it wouldn't hurt to take her out to Bullard's and let her watch me open the house. Right, George, I'll show her who knows important people. Mr. Bentley, Pat. I don't see anybody at the complaint department. Good chance to talk to Gloria. Good morning, Gloria. Well, drop Morton. What are you doing so far away from the water department? Oh, just attending some important business for an important friend of mine. Oh, who? Ever hear of Rumson Bullard? Mr. Bullard? I should say so. He's one of our big accounts. Well, that's the kind of people I know. <laughs> the big account people. <laughs> Is he really a friend of yours? Called me from Canada this morning. Long distance. He did? <laughs> At least on his way home from Canada. <laughs> Look, I even have the key to his house. I've seen Mr. Bullard's home. It's enormous. Well, it doesn't look so big to me. Of course, I've been over there so often. I drove past it the other night with Mr. Krause. Oh, him. Well, when you're with me, you don't have to drive past it. How'd you like to go inside? Oh, I'd love to. Well, if you'd care to drive out someplace for lunch with me, we can stop there on the way. I promised Mr. Bullard I'd check. See if everything's all right in the house. Turn on the refrigerator. It's a date. Great. I haven't had lunch with a handsome man for some time. What about that assistant manager? Oh, Frock Morton. Mr. Krause doesn't mean anything to me. Oh, Gloria, you go out with him nearly every night. But this is daytime. <laughs> oh, Mr. Mr. Bullard's house. You meet me there? Why don't you go with me? Well, I'm not sure just when I can get off for lunch. Oh. Well, see you out there, then. <laughs> Wait a minute. You don't have a car. I'll borrow Mr. Krause's. What? Oh, well, I'll be waiting on the porch. Ta-ta. Bye. Well, what's so wrong with that? She's meeting me on Hogan Brothers' time and Krause's gasoline. <laughs> should be showing up. It's quarter past twelve. Here comes a car. Oh, it must be Gloria. Hello, Gilda. Yeah, Judge Hooker. Hello, Judge. Gilda, what are you doing prowling around on Rumson Bullard's front porch? I don't know anyone who has a better right to be here. Guess who called me long distance today? Who? Rumson Bullard. Oh, he wanted me to do him a favor. What, leave town before he gets here? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. He told me where he kept the key to the house and asked me to go in and turn on the refrigerator. Kind of see that everything's all right, that is. Well, have you done it? I'm not ready yet. Oh? What are you standing on the porch swinging Bullard's key for? You want everybody to think you're a friend of his? Judge, you know me better than that. I'm not the kind who goes around trying to impress people. It's your little friend, Miss McKinley. Come in, Gloria. Judge, how about showing off? Oh, I wouldn't leave now for the world. I like to be around fellows who don't try to impress people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. 
goat. Oh, Judge Hilker. How do you do, Miss McKinley? Judge, are you a friend of Mr. Bullard, too? Well, I happen to be his attorney. Open the door, Gelda, and let's go in. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm just mad about big, beautiful homes like this. Well, I'm a little blasé about it, I guess. Living across the street and all. After you, Gloria. Oh, thanks. Hmm, mothballed. Well, Rumson doesn't take chances with his fine tapestries in Persian rugs. Gloria, the tapestries are those rugs on the wall. No, oh, we have them in the store. Nothing like these, of course. You wait until you see Buller's antiques. They're very old. If I were you, Gildy, I'd turn on the refrigerator and get out. You know how fussy Rumson is about his house. Judge, I'm just showing Gloria around. Now, this is the den. Oop, closed closet. <laughs> you need somebody to show you around. <laughs> Judge, why don't you open that door? The one that leads outside. Yeah, I think I will. If you're going to be poking around in here, I want no part of it. Good day, Miss McKinley. Goodbye, Judge. Come on, Gloria. I want to show you the den. All right. Yeah, uh, let's see. There's a big desk in there. Oh, well, that's Bullard's study. My, what a lot of books. Yeah. Let's go in and study. Throckmorton. <laughs> what a gorgeous desk. Yeah, solid mahogany. Oh, I can just see you behind the desk like this. Well, why don't I sit behind it? <laughs> Deep chair. Oh, Throckmorton, you look so low and important. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kinley, pull up a chair and take a letter. How can I refuse? You're the boss. Oh, brother, am I making progress. <laughs> I'll even use Mr. Bullard's gold pen. That a girl. Assistant manager, turn in your carnation. I'm ready, sir. You're so right. Dear Miss McKinley. Yeah, let's scratch that out. Just make it. Darling. Throck more. <laughs> you, have you got that? Hmm. No ink in the pen. Oh? Well, here's a whole bottle full. Royal purple. Here, wait till I get the top off. It, it, it stuck a little. Oh, careful, Throckmorton. No, oh. quit. Oh. Zeke, all over Bullard's rug. Oh, brother. Purple ink. You think Mr. Bullard will care? Care? His Persian rug? I mean, where's my handkerchief? Get a blotter. Oh, it's no use, Throckmorton. Oh, what a shame. Priceless rug. It's a good thing you know Mr. Bullard so well. You are an old friend of his, aren't you? Yes, yeah, old friend. <laughs> I'm getting older by the minute. The great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. A hostess named Hilda had dinner for eight. She planned and she worked so her meal would be great. It would have been two, but her salad lacked zip. What poor Hilda needed was Miracle Whip. Some poetry, huh? Well, anyway, the idea is a mighty good one. Why let a flat-tasting salad detract from an otherwise perfect meal? Give that salad the bright, sparkling flavor you want it to have. Make it with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip has a wonderful flavor, a lively, teasing flavor, a peppy flavor that's just sharp enough. And it's a flavor you won't find in any other salad dressing. That's because Miracle Whip is made from a secret craft recipe. A recipe that was created to give you the best qualities of good old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine, rich mayonnaise. And Miracle Whip is blended carefully with special beaters to give this salad dressing just the creamy, thick texture and satin smoothness you want. Smooth and delicious, it's no wonder Miracle Whip has become the most popular salad dressing ever created. Actually, Miracle Whip outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it yourself. 
See how much better tasting your salads can be when you make them with Miracle Whip. Fruit or vegetable, meat or seafood, plain or fancy, they'll be delicious. Tomorrow, get a jar of America's favorite salad dressing, Miracle Whip. Well, all Mr. Bullard did was phone from out of town and ask Bertie to go across the street and turn on his refrigerator. The great Gildersleeve took over from there. Uncle Mort, you mean you spilled a whole bottle of ink on Mr. Bullard's Persian rug? No, Margie, it's nothing serious. Bertie will know how to get it out. If you'd let Bertie go over and turn on the refrigerator in the first place, it wouldn't have happened. Well, I wanted to do Mr. Bullard a favor. I want us to be good friends. Well, you're making a fine start. No, my dear, I'm afraid I haven't time to discuss it anymore. The ink's drying. Bertie! In the kitchen! I don't have to tell Bertie where the ink spot is. I'll just find out how to remove it. Bertie? Yes, sir? How do you go about removing an ink spot? An ink spot? Well, you might say a good-sized ink stain. The size a whole bottle would make. Oh, if it's that bad, I'd go down to Mr. Peavy's and get some ink remover. Well, I haven't much time, Bertie. You must have some home remedies for taking out ink spots. Well, they say one way to remove ink spots is to soak them in milk. Milk? Of course, I haven't tried it, but I hear it works. But, Bertie, even if the ink comes out, won't the milk leave a stain? Yes, sir. But if you want to get the milk stains out, you use coffee. Coffee? Of course, I haven't tried it, but I hear it works. <laughs> well, I know darn well coffee leaves a stain. I spill it in my tie all the time. Well, there's ways of getting out coffee. Who? Oh? If you want to remove coffee stains, you brush them with glycerine. Oh, my goodness. Of course, I haven't tried it, but I hear it work. <laughs> Bertie, wouldn't glycerin leave a greasy spot? Well, if you want to chase a grease spot, you just sprinkle on some talcum powder. Talcum powder? You sprinkle it on, rub it in, and take it up with a vacuum cleaner. But, Bertie... Of course, I haven't tried it, but I hear it work. <laughs> yes, yes. Bertie, I'm in a hurry. Yes, sir. You want me to get you the milk, the coffee, the glycerine, the talcum powder, and the vacuum cleaner? No, thanks. I'll go down to Peavy's. Hello, Peavy. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you this afternoon? Peavy, what'll remove ink spots? Built your mink, did you? <laughs> what do you think? You think you spilled your mink? <laughs> oh, brother. Peavy, how do I get it out? Uh, well, where are the ink spots, Mr. Gildersleeve? I haven't time to go into that. I have to get the spots out before Bullard comes home today. What's Mr. Bullard got to do with it? The ink is on his rug. Hurry up, Petey. Uh, what's your ink doing on his rug? <laughs> it's not my ink, it's his ink. I went over to Bullard's to turn on his refrigerator, and I spilled it on his Persian rug. My, my, does Mr. Bullard have a Persian rug under his refrigerator? <laughs> No, Peavy, this happened in his library. He keeps a refrigerator in the library? <laughs> no. I was in his library with Miss McKinley. Oh, you two were raiding the refrigerator. <laughs> we were not. Now, how about selling me some ink remover? Well, I'd like to, Mr. Gildersleeve, but it just happens that I've sold the last bottle. Why didn't you tell me that when I came in? You didn't ask me. <laughs> You just asked me what would take out the spots. You didn't ask me if I had any. Peavy. But since I don't have any, I'll tell you what will take them out. Oh, what? Milk. Zeke. Of course. <laughs> I haven't tried it, but I hear it works. I'm right back where I started. Well, whatever I do, I have to work fast. See you later, Peavy. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes? If you don't mind my asking, just what was Miss McKinley doing at Mr. Bullard's house? She came in to help me turn on the refrigerator. 
Mm. <laughs> it's true, Pete. Besides, you have no right to meddle in my affairs. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Leroy, but I'm working against the deadline. Willard's train comes in at 6 o'clock. You'll be walking in that front door at 5 after. How much could he sue you for if you don't take out this spot? Leroy, let's not speculate. Get busy. Okay. You pour the bottle of milk on the spot, and I'll scrub with this brush. We'll just hope the milk doesn't leave a stain, that's all. It's a brown rug, huh? Maybe we should use chocolate milk. <laughs> Leroy. Sure, I'll run down to Mr. Peavy's and get three. One for you, one for me, and one for the rug. Young man, pour the milk. Okay. You know, I've got a feeling this ain't gonna work. Well, I'll scrub a little and see. More milk, Leroy. Okay, it's your funeral. Yeah, I'll give it a good scrub. Uh oh. The brush doesn't absorb enough. Hand me one of Mr. Bullard's towels. Sure. <coughs> yeah, they'll do the trick. Yeah, look, Leroy. It's coming out of the rug. The towel's turning purple. I'll say. Yeah, hand me some more towels. Yeah, here you are. <laughs> By George, it's working like a charm. Yeah. But how are you going to get the ink out of Mr. Bullard's towels? Hmm. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. Can I go now, Wong? You cannot. You're in this as deep as I am. <laughs> Leroy, keep your eye on Mr. Bullard's washing machine while I tidy up things. Gosh, I didn't mind helping you clean the rug, but doing Mr. Bullard's laundry, this is beneath me. <laughs> Leroy, I have to get the ink out of the towels. Yeah, get the ink out of the towels or get the heck out of town. <laughs> Uh-oh. Wonder who's at the front door. Gosh, maybe it's Mr. Bullard, home early. Leroy, that's a morbid thought. You mind if I slip out the back way? You stick right here in the service porch. Okay, God. I'll go see who it is. door before dark. <laughs> Coming! <laughs> Who is it? It's your friendly neighborhood Juggett. Yofrick. Phoebe, what are you doing here? Yeah, let me come in and I'll tell you. Yeah, all right. Come on back to the service porch. You know, after you left the pharmacy, Mr. Gildersleeve, I happened to run across a stray bottle of ink remover. Well, thanks, Phoebe, but everything's been taken care of. I'm using the washing machine. Is that the rug in the washing machine? <laughs> well, towels, Phoebe. Well, how did towels get into this? It's a long story, Phoebe. Let's forget it. Okay, well. Right. My, this is a big house. We're nearly there, Phoebe. Yeah, hello, Leroy. How are you doing, Leroy? How do I know? Well, looking through the glass in the washing machine, I'd say I need a little more soap. I think I'll open the door and dump some in. Are you supposed to open the door with the machine running? Why not? Oh! Watch it out! The water's coming out! Ron found it. I dropped the soap box in the machine. Close the door, huh? I'm trying to. There, there. Ah, looks like old faithful. <laughs> Running all over the floor. Mr. Bullard isn't going to like this. Why, Phoebe Leroy, man the mop. Okay. We have to keep it out of the kitchen. You'll flood the house. 
Phoebe, wait over and close the door. No, thank you. I'm not taking my bath till Saturday night. <laughs> That Mr. Gillsleeve, he must have had a merry time over there this afternoon. It serves him right, Bertie. He should have let you go over and turn on Mr. Buller's refrigerator. I wonder why he don't want Mr. Gillsleeve in his house. Oh, he's just allergic to Unky. Boy, am I bushed. Well, personally, I feel better now that I'm in some dry clothes. Did you get the ink out of Mr. Buller's rug? Well, that was nothing. We had to wash his towels, mop the soap suds off the floor, and scrub them off the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> off the ceiling? Well, I guess I did use a dash too much soap. But by George, I got everything slicked up and neat as a pin. Bullard will never know anything happened. <laughs> you got to just in time. Mr. Bullard's over there now. Say, come to think of it, he doesn't even know I did a little favor for him. I better go over and tell him. Why don't you play it smart, Unc, and stay on your own side of the street? Leroy, if Mr. Bullard and I are going to be friends, he should know when I do him a favor. You won't have to go over, Unky. Here he comes across the street. Well, great. I'll open the door for it. Hello, Mr. Bullard. Welcome home. Hello, Gilda Sleeve. I was just about to come over and tell you that I personally took care of things at your house today. Oh? I didn't think it was Birdie. Oh? Something wrong, Mr. Bullard? Yes. Well, I was sure I got all the ink out of your rug. Ink on my Persian rug? <laughs> Naturally, we got a little on your towels, but we washed them all out. You washed my towels? And when the washing machine overflowed, we didn't let it go beyond the butler's pantry. Well, this is news. You mean you didn't know? No. No, I didn't. Well, then, Mr. Bullard, what are you angry about? Gilda Sleeve, you forgot to turn on my refrigerator! <laughs> the great Gilda Sleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. A tempting fancy salad main dish deserves something special in the way of a bread or cracker accompaniment. So try hot cheese-filled rolls, corn sticks, or oven-toasted crackers. That good-looking salad deserves something special in the way of dressing, too. So use Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip is so delicious, it makes any salad, elegant or plain, taste better than ever. Try it. See what the lively, teasing flavor of Miracle Whip can do for your salad favorites. See why millions prefer Miracle Whip. <laughs> here on the front steps? Oh, just waiting to hear from Mr. Bullard. Waiting to hear from him? He said he was going back home and take a shower. That's right. Well, he was sore. He said if you ever set foot on his property again, he'd call the cops. Yes, I know. Well, what are you waiting for? I don't get it. You will, my boy. How do you know you're going to hear from him? You wait. When you do hear from him, what are you going to hear? You'll see. Well, when you hear what you're going to hear, what are you going to do? You watch. <laughs> Hey, there he is at the window. You were right, huh? You bet. Hello, Mr. Bullard. Gildersleeve, I'm soaking wet. Get me a dry towel. What's the matter, Mr. Bullard? No dry towel? You know there are. You wash them all, you big lover. Well, too bad I can't come on your property, Mr. Bullard. Gildersleeve, I'm freezing. Bring me a towel. All right, I will. First thing tomorrow morning. <laughs> By George, it's good to have old Bullard back. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Marvin Miller, Gloria Blondell, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Houston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. What goes into a perfect sandwich? Maybe it's roast beef or savory baked ham. 
Whatever your favorite, the perfect meat sandwich needs the perfect mustard. Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. You can take your choice of two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft mustard is smooth and delicately spiced. Or if you like your mustard with extra pep, try Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Keep them both on hand and keep everyone in the family happy. Next time, get Kraft prepared mustard. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.